Thank you, Trustee Shannon. We are so grateful to have the privilege, by the grace of the eternal God, to be in the house of prayer one more time. That's been set aside for religious tutoring and for us to fellowship with one another. I rehearse in your hearing uh, this evening what the Apostle Peter says in the book of Acts chapter 2 and uh, verse 42. He said, they continued steadfastly. Now, I want you to understand something. It means something to make up in your mind that you're going to continue. Well, we live in a world of constant change. We live in a world that uh, it seems like one day to the next, nothing remains the same. But the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I think all of us that uh, have any working knowledge with Jesus Christ, we understand that cognitively. But Peter says something that I think is so uh, uh, earth-shaking and awakening to not only the church populace, but those that would study the uh, word of God. He says this in, term, in the primitive church. He said uh, uh, they were steadfast, steadfast. Uh, let's flip that, if you will. They were fasted. <laughs> it was something about the Holy Spirit that kept them, their hearts, their mind, entrenched in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, the dogma of the church of that particular time. Listen, they didn't have very much, <laughs> but what they did have, they were steadfast. And what did Peter mean by that? He said they were steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, dogma, or what Jesus, which is the boss of Pentecost, what Jesus said to them, it stayed with them. And they did not deviate from it. My God, my God. I wonder how far we are from the original church in 30 or 33 AD circa. I wonder where is the power that they had in that primitive church. They would pray and prayers would be certainly answered. Problems would be solved and decisions, and might I say informed decisions, were made. And conflict, it had resolution. I, I believe there is something to what Peter was saying. Secondly, he said fellowship. The apostle doctrine certainly points us to the mindset of they had some type of interactive Bible study. In fellowship, they couldn't wait to commune with the people of God. There was similarity amongst all of them. Bible even said the same, had the same things in common. They were on one accord. And certainly thirdly, the Bible says breaking bread. And perhaps that is understood in regard not only the communal meal, but it was uh, the Last Supper, the Eucharist, communion, Lord's Supper, and it has a number of names. Not only that, but he gives reference, he says, and in, in prayer. Prayer is that intimacy toward God. How can we praise God who won't talk to God? There was prayer. They actually had a certain day, certain time to prayer in terms of prayer. So those four things that I think that was pregnant for them to advance the gospel of Christ, Christianity, and that was 
staying in the apostles' doctrine, what is being taught, fellowship, somewhere connecting to the people of God in the early church. And of course, the communion or Eucharist. And then lastly, but not least, prayer. Prayer is a powerful tool in the hand of a child of God. My, 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 my. Prayer keeps you connected. Prayer brings you through a lot of storms. Prayer keeps your, your psyche, your mind in the right way. Paul wrote to the church of Philippi and told them, oh, hallelujah, about prayer, about having what? This mind of Christ. Can we say praise the Lord? Now, I mentioned those things, my brothers and sisters, to inform us in their absence, other things takes its place. Ah, can we say hallelujah? I want to talk about a couple of things tonight. Uh, transparency. I want to talk about uh, what it does when we fail to be transparent. Prior to doing that, I want to say this is coming to you this evening, this Tuesday evening from Bethany Apostolic Church. We are located at 212 Mulberry in the heart of the city of Evansville, Indiana. We have services on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., you are cordially invited, you and your friend. Visitors are welcome, members, well, you know. <laughs> Can we say hallelujah? That is at 11 a.m., 11 a.m. here on campus, and also we have on our social media as well. You can contact us at bethanyapostolic.org. I'm sorry, bethanyapostolicevansville.org. You can also contact us at bethanyapostolic212 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Also, we have service on uh, every Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. It is our Bible study, a time for us to come together and listen to the word of God, the time we can ask a few questions as well. And I would certainly encourage you uh, to take advantage of that little thing. They call it chat, I believe. <laughs> and I'm not too familiar with that. But uh, you can do so. And we have a food pantry that operates on every third Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Those of you in need, the doors are open for you. Can we say praise the Lord again? Praise the Lord. All right. Once again, we welcome you. We welcome you. I want to start off uh, tonight with a particular scripture that most of us are familiar with. And that is in the book of Psalms. And in particular, that is Psalms... 119 and uh, starting with 61 I believe and I've got my notes all up here and jumble them, jumble them all up uh, if you don't have it now you ain't get, you don't have it can we say hallelujah my 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 ain't God good he's good to me he is good to me. Well, I think I got it here. Let's see. We called Psalms 119 and verses 161 to 168. Let me clarify that again. Psalms 119 verses 161 through 168. I may read a different context or Bible than what you may have, but it says this, those 
whose hearts stand up in awe of God's word will rather endure the wrath of man. And uh, are you still with me? Well, I have to be with myself. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Can we see hallelujah again? I didn't bring my other Bible with me. Well, all right. Deacon, if you will, let me see your Bible. All right, hope I can see that. I hope I can see that. All right, somebody, give me a, all right, all right. Oh my, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it's too small for me, daughter. <laughs> Deacon, if you will, let's let's Deacon, if you will, just just come on up here and right here, just read it for me. He said, "I'm not worried about formality tonight." No, just come right up here and you can read it. You can read it. Just stand right here. Let them know what you're reading. Psalm 119, verses 161 through 168. 161 through 168. Okay, sorry, right there. That's Psalm 119, verses 161 through 168. Mm -hmm. And it reads as such. Thy word is truth unto the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great sport. I hate and abhor a lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and none thy commandments. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and none thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. That was Psalms 119, verses 161 through 168. Thank you, Deacon. Come on, put your hand together and give God some praise. Those of you that have taken the opportunity to peruse this particular passage of scripture, obviously you know something that is occurring in the life of the composer. And that something appears to be a couple of things. Number one, it appears that he's going through some type of what? Depression. If you look very closely as to what the writer is conveying to us, I think all of us perhaps would have consensus that obviously there is something amiss. He's going through something. Can we say praise the Lord? And I think that something can be identifiable in regards that he's going through some difficulties, starting with 161. Can we say praise the Lord? Secondarily, at the end of our reading tonight by our deacon, and thank you so much, Deacon Johnson, we can also perhaps concur that he has found a solution for what he is going through. One thing also I think that stands as a priority is that he has the ability to self-disclose and be transparent toward God. Perhaps the question would arise in the hearers, the class tonight on campus and those that are in our media audience. Pastor Frazier, Bishop Frazier, what do you mean by the idea of someone being transparent? Is it a disclosure of our attitudes, feelings, emotions, thoughts, 
and perhaps even behavior. Some challenges in our personal life that needs to be readjusted. What would you consider tonight is being transparent? Could we also put in the mix being truthful to one another? Can we also say that when one is transparent, it's like the crystal that you can see, that you can see right, right through it. Hmm? Transparency. Obviously, it brings our mind to the fact that we can what? We can see through something. Hmm? Can we say praise the Lord? So, if we utilize those particular things that we have discussed at this time, how do we use the term transparency? In a religious term, how can we say, God, I will be transparent toward you when God already knows who we are? And he has what? He has a real definition as to who you and I have become. Hmm? So how can we say, God, I'm going to have transparency with you? And God already knows us from the crown of our head to the soul's of our feet. And we certainly know because he is God that there is nothing that is hid from him. So how can we say that we're going to have transparency with God when God already knows us? Hmm? Perhaps some would say that's simply absurd. It's chaotic. Hmm? Particularly, we don't even know what. We don't even know ourselves. And of course, if Jeremiah was here tonight, he would say what? He said, you know what? The heart is deceitful above all things. And you'd say, who can know it? And God would say, I know it. I try the reins. I search the heart. Can we say praise the Lord? So my brothers and sisters, tonight, let us look at ourselves and perhaps let us not disclose to anyone else. So what is the writer trying to convey to us? Nothing shall, what? Offend them. Isn't that something? Nothing shall offend offend them. I, in my study, I was certainly looking in scripture and I was trying to find other particular passages of scripture that use the word offend or offense. To get a concise understanding as to what perhaps the scripture meant in various places. There's a scripture in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 34. I would ask that you consider that at a time of leisure. There's a scripture in the book of John, chapter 6. And, of course, in Psalms 119, 165, and 168. What does he mean in terms of our favorite scripture that is in uh, 119 Psalms in one hundred and sixty. Is it five? <laughs> Are you with me tonight? He says something. Great peace. What do we consider as great peace? Great peace. Great peace. In a time that so many within the visible church, the physical church, don't have the peace. Hmm? Transparency. 
and folks won't say. See, how can we actually get help from the Lord when we're not transparent to the Lord? Most of the time, we try to conceal Bubba and Lala. <laughs> oh, you don't know who Bubba and Lala is? Hmm? Put under pressure, you'll find out who they are. And you may not like Bubba and Lala. <laughs> Can't we say praise the Lord? So the writer says something I think is very intriguing. He says, great peace. Now, if he says great peace, does not that constitute if we do not have great peace that we do not love his law? The above verses from uh, 161 and coming down to 168 has a lot of content. And it seems like he is in a place in his journey, his tenure with God, that things are not working right, but yet at the same time, he is in a relationship with God. Now, I want you to hear me tonight. If we ever intend to glean from what the scripture has specifically said to us, we must be transparent. It, we, we must come to the place that uh, uh, I, I'm going through something. I'm facing some difficulty. I, 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 I'm feeling the, the, the pressures of the storm. Am I talking loud enough? Hmm? Even though the storm has, has passed over, I look around, but the storm has done some damage. The storm has, has altered the life that I've set for myself. I'm coming to the grips now to understand that it, it's not my path, it's not my journey, but it's God's. Transparency with God. You know what you're going through, but transparency with God. That many times we won't say that, God, I don't feel the way that I used to feel. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Time, time brings about a change. Most folks that uh, uh, are feeling the, the, the change as to what is happening in the time and they won't be honest with themselves. How can God help us and assist us if we won't be transparent? Hmm? Let me show you something. I want you to stay with me now. I, I mentioned this somewhat uh, a few weeks ago or a few months ago. Pardon me. <laughs> There's something known as what? Cause and effect. If I touch a hot stove, my hand's going to burn. Hmm? Can we say praise the Lord? There is something that causes us to act the way that we act. How many times you heard your pastor say this, and I'll say it again tonight in this unusual study. How you doing? I'm okay. Now, the Bible says that the physician, Jesus, only comes to heal those or touch those that need a physician. How many times do you pass to say, raise your hand if God is saving you from something? And some folks won't even raise their hand. <laughs> well, he no longer is your savior. You have not allowed him 
to direct the course of your life. You have not given him permission to say, I'm the one that sustains you. You declare your own autonomy. Jesus is only a reference to what you cannot do rather than say what Oh, I'll say it again tonight. What the psalmist says, trust. Now follow what he's saying now. Trust in the Lord, right? But he's saying, trust in me. What for? For every particular area of your temporal existence. Now, if we don't trust him, hold on now, put this seatbelt tighten it up. Then we accuse him of not being capable of managing the affairs of our lives. Hmm? And our circumstance, the challenges that we confront, they stay at our own residence. And they do not move then the only alternative that we have is to lean and what you lean to, you fall to. Lean to our own concept as to what's going on in our lives. I want you to say this right quick before I lose my thought. It is problems that need to be solved, but the problems are not given to the Lord, so the problems are solved by our own humanness. It only means the way that we see it. And we exclude the trust in God, and since we belong to him, it is incumbent upon us to follow his methodology and brings us to a positive outcome. I'd like to think, and I hope you think with me, is that anytime we trust God, that means trust what? His word. This means that our outcome is predetermined. Can we say praise the Lord? But something happens. We don't want to be transparent. Let, let me say this again, too, while we are talking in this particular area. You recall Jesus Christ at one interval, uh, Peter, James, and John, they were with him as he transfigures. Are you still with me? Then they come back, and the populace was talking to his disciples, and then they turned to Jesus and said, we brought him to your disciples. They couldn't heal him. Jesus said, oh, you little faith. He scolded him right in front of the public. We don't like that. Then he, he turned to the child's father, I believe. And he said, if you can help me, Lord, we need some help now. Give me some help. One thing was striking about the, the reply was the mere fact that uh, he says to Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. It, it, it appears that should be canceled out. But he was transparent. He, he was transparent. And notice that Jesus talks to the one that doesn't have the problem. His child has the problem. But it was transparent. And many times we want the help of God, but we don't want to be transparent. Lord, I, 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 I got a problem with believing. I got a problem with doing. Of course, God already knows it anyway. Many times we just need what? To make that confession. Confession, in its simplicity, it means to acknowledge. None of us, none of us, whoever we are, I don't care how intellectual inclined you are, I don't care how 
theological astute you are, none of us, none of us can understand the complexity of God and why God does what he does. And yet at the same time, we are benefited from what God does. How is it that he says being a base that that's the thing that exalts us? How, how, what kind of sense does it make for me to love my enemy when he's tormenting me? Hmm? What sense does it make when he says, if they work on one cheek, turn the other? I'm trying to save this one. But who can understand the complexity of God? Hmm? So it's to our advantage, my brothers and sisters, to learn how to be transparent. Holding those things in. Hmm? And sometimes we say, well, I'm introverted. Hmm? Oh, I'll, I'll do it myself. I got, I'm, I'm in control. I, 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 I know what I'm doing. And this is why it is vitally important for the child of God to find some time in, in solitude and prayer to pour out your spirit. I often say in church here at Bethany and elsewhere that I'm permitted to go and, and divulge this magnif magnificent Christ of ours and his work that when is the last time you've been on your knees and crocodile tears came down your eyes? When is the last time that God has just touched you in, in such a capacity that you lose yourself? And most folks are trying to contain themselves. Inside there's a, a, a tsunami, there's an earthquake going inside and there's trouble that you need help but you won't say it. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Everything's okay. Now, keep in mind, you're doing fine. You, you tell God you're doing fine. If not, you're lying. Oh, my, that was pretty rough, wasn't it? Let me say it again. If not, you're lying. Hmm? God is the one that keeps us together. He is the one that we look to for assistance and guidance in a world that's gone mad lost its direction. If you can't tell God, Lord, I need help. Don't feel the way that I feel. I don't like feeling. I don't, I don't like me. I got a problem with me. It's not everybody else. Now, let me say this to you. I, I, I'm going somewhere tonight. Let me say this to you. When we cannot come to those places of personal awakening, we stop in our progress. Recognize their struggles to Lord, where, to, to, to where I am and to where you want me to be, but I want to be saved. I don't want to forfeit my salvation. I want you to stay with me now. When these things are bubbled up in you, tied up in you, your thinking is altered. Hear me tonight. Your thinking is altered. Your emotions are altered. Your behavior is predictable. That's that what? Cause and effect. There is something or a reason why we conduct ourselves this way. There's a reason why our self-talk, that monologue that goes in our head that no one else can see, that challenges us. There's a reason for that. I want you to stay with me now. There's a reason for that. There's a reason that I, I, you feel the way that you feel. 
Now note the writer again. The writer says what? Verse what? 165? Now, great peace. Now keep in mind, great peace is available to you. Do you follow me? Great peace is available to you. Now, keep in mind, all of us, I think, would have consensus at this particular time to say what? I want peace of mind. I make a statement a few uh, classes ago, and I'll interject it again, and that was this. Lord, make my mind mine. Give me the ability to excommunicate intrusive thoughts. And no one have the ability to tell God to. Hmm? Now hear what I'm saying tonight. Anytime something comes into your head and you say, where did this come from? Many times it could be perverse. Hmm? It could be an evil thought towards someone. You have to be wise enough and cognizant enough to address it. Don't let it stay there. I often say thoughts are just like seeds. And the devil, he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll throw a bomb on you. Hmm? Sometimes you don't realize what it is. Hmm? It works on that lower nature. Hmm? Oh, how oh, that's another Bible class in itself. Transparent. No. I got it all fixed up. I'm all together. I'm wrapped up tight. I'm glued. I'm got I got it. No, I don't either. My dependency is on God. Hmm? Look what he says here. I want to bring this other part out too. He says what? In all what? Now listen to what I'm saying now. In all thy ways. In all thy ways. He says to what? He says to acknowledge him. Lord, I acknowledge you that you are my Savior now. I acknowledge that you are my counselor now. I acknowledge that I go through the difficulties of life and feel the pull of this world because I do not acknowledge you. I do not recognize you as a counselor. Listen, there was an old song we used to sing years ago in holiness, and I, I, I don't hardly hear it anymore. He is a lawyer. But Larry, but Clark, you remember that? He's a lawyer where? In the courtroom, he's a doctor. Oh my, we had a time. We take and cut our step. I can't cut it like I used to. It was just not a song we in actuality believed in. Hmm? And our mindset was to take everything to the Lord. I don't care how minute or how paramount it was. It was for us to take it to the Lord. And anytime you begin to do those specific things, you recognize that you are now wanting to be transparent before the Lord. And what, ha what has happened to us in this journey of life? As we progress, life changes us, but it doesn't change God. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing that we could say what the Bible tells us about Christ in Hebrews chapter 13? He's the same yesterday, today, forever. Mm -hmm. But it's changed us. We don't have the peace we're plagued by the spirit of depression and folks won't talk about it. 
there is something that is in uh, uh, our clinical world that is called spiritual depression. Most folks know about clinical depression. And if you note on the TV that you will see a lot of advertisement about now in terms of depression and anxiety. Depression primarily is the idea of those things are past we can't get over. And anxiety is the idea of fear of the future. Put your seat better when I say transparency. I don't want you to uh, act in any kind of way to disclose, uh, discover where you are. But you have a lot of folks that sit in church. Hear what I'm saying now? I'm talking about Bethany and our media as well. They're afraid of death. Not necessarily death because we don't know everybody's going to die. But they're afraid of where they're going. There's the uncertainty, and yet at the same time, God says, great peace and they love thy law. All right, now you're going to say now, great peace and they love thy law. And law could be uh, interpreted, understood as his word, as scripture. Am I talking loud enough? But they think that they're all right if they don't die. <laughs> That's a sad commentary, isn't it? The scripture tells us that it's once upon it of a man and died and after judgment. Now, what happens is that they're not necessarily afraid of dying. They're afraid of, because life continues, my brother and sister. Only thing dies is body. Hmm? They are afraid of the time that will no longer exist, the time that will step over into eternity. And where are they going to spend eternity? Because life, if you note something, life continues. Have you forgotten Ecclesiastes chapter 3? Hmm? There's a time, what, to be born? Look what he's saying now. There's a time to be born. And there's a time, what, to die. But life continues. You continue. And because folks do not have the peace of God that they sing about and talk about, many are afraid of the hereafter. Only thing is going to die is your body, and it has to change. I'm not talking loud enough. The only thing was awakened is what? Your spirit, Ephesians 2 and 1. Romans chapter 8, he talks about what? Quickening the body. The only thing that's going to change is your body. So what happens, a lot of folks, they think about death, but really they think about where they're going to spend eternity, and they do not have that great peace. Put your seatbelt on, so go ahead at night. Also, another thing you want to deal with, they want to deal with something that's called guilt. A lot of folks live with guilt, guilt of their past, guilt of the now. Hmm? And fail to understand, once again, it takes away that great peace. And most folks would not be transparent to the Lord, even though the Lord knows us. And as a result of that, they do not have the peace that God says is theirs because they have gone through the process of spiritual nativity, that rebirth, that regeneration. Uh, Paul says it like this to the church community of Corinth in his second book. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, when? Now, the family of God. They are solidified, bona fide family member. They've been born of the spirit. Paul says that they are what? A new creature. If you're a new creature, obviously it enables you because of his investment in you to do new things. That old life has certainly passed away. It has drifted away. And now he says, behold, all things become new. 
We must be cognizant enough to understand that now, because the Spirit of God is invested in us, we can do those new things. Why? Number one, because our life is changed and our heart now is teachable. But we won't be transparent. When there's difficulties, don't you know that it's always to your advantage to tell God when you cannot overcome an obstacle that is in your path? Hmm? What's that old song? Take it to the Lord? Oh, I think it's a song anyway. <laughs> and my, I think someone said, and leave it what? Don't pick it up again. So along this journey, it is to our advantage again that we understand that God is our helper and he is our helper through this spiritual journey with him. There comes a time when we find the peace of God that we are looking for, that we need, that life becomes enjoyable. Hear what I'm saying now? Even through the test and the trials. Don't you know any time you pass a test, you ought to get happy. Hmm? Any time that the enemy has tried to tempt you and you're going through, you ought to get happy. The writer said it like this. He says, count it. Oh, you said it, but are you doing it? <laughs> count it all joy. But keep in mind, that takes some stamina. It takes some stick to itness hmm? for you to count it joy. Somebody's working on me and you counting your step. But you know what normally happens? We find ourselves recoiling. We find ourselves dropping in depression and anxiety. And the Bible says to what? Count it all joy. Can we say praise the Lord again? So my brethren, all of this if we intend to be recipients of the great peace, this also means that there's something about God's word that enables us. Hmm? Great peace have they that love, what? Thy law. Thy law. Now, note something. Great peace can only come when you love God's word. Hmm? My, 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 my. When you love God's word. Hmm? God is feeding you his word. Hmm? His word is what? John 6 and 63. His word, keep in mind, it's spirit. What does it mean, spirit? Spirit. And he says it is, secondarily, it is, it is life. Now, if God's word is spirit and life, why is it such a difficulty for us to accept God's word? Hmm? And of course, that is somewhat rhetorical tonight. Hmm? Spirit and life. Might I say spirit in life? Hmm? Spirit in life. In that chapter of John, Gospel of John, it's incumbent, it's based on the idea of what folks are eating. Check it out, check it out. As we progress tonight, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that if his word, if we have peace, great peace, and that great peace is what now? Great peace have they that what? Now, great peace have they that love thy law. How can that be possible for us to have great peace and that's all we have to do is just love God's law? The Bible says that love covers what? A multitude of sin, a multitude of fault. Now, this means that he is positioning us I often say uh, to various uh, uh, 
groups or individuals, even the church, that love is a stratagem. The stratagem. Love changes the heart and mindset of so many people. But keep in mind, you have to work on it. Love is not looking to be reciprocated. Love just does. Because that's the thing that love does. The Bible said that God is love. He is the epitome of love. Hmm? He loved us. We were still sinners. He loved us when we challenged and raised our fists toward the throne room of heaven itself. And yet at the same time, time God did not charge us but he loved us am I talking about it now you have to love God's law for God's word to become a reality and bring forth fruit inside of you when you're confronting the obstacles of life the challenges of life it is the word of God that presents itself hmm and you are confident enough to turn to God. Who do you turn to when something happens in your life? I've tried my best within this last year when something happens and something that uh, challenges me, I try to get somewhere and just hit my knees. He said, acknowledge him. Lord, I need some help right now. If I can't do that, I'll say it in my mind, my heart. I'll let it go in that uh, mono thought in my mind, that self talk. Hmm? I'm literally trying to put God's word in action, and it changes me. Hmm? It's so hard to change people, but you can change yourself. Hmm? You keep feeling the same feeling, you need to. Confess to God. Recognize, Lord, this is a transparency. Transparency. This cannot keep going on like it's going on. Can we say praise the Lord? I gave reference. I said there many times that when you're going through something that other things happen. When you don't have the peace of mind, something happens to you. You don't have that great peace. Something happens to you. Now, you may not know it right away, but people know it. Am I talking loud enough? Hmm? If we believe that there is a cause and effect for the obvious of things that we confront, then we need to know why does it happen? Why does it happen? Hmm? If I'm a person that is usually jubilant, I'm happy, I'm going forward, and something happens, well, there's a cause for that. I'd like to think, and of course, you may differ with me. You may say, Pastor Fraser, that's supposition. It's an inference. I'd like to think that that first part of the class we're talking in regards to uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Hmm? That it is a foundation for the principle of of the early church when the Bible says once again they were steadfast. This is something they held on to. The apostles doctrine. Mm -hmm. Hear what I'm saying now? Pardon me. When we start wavering from the doctrine what we know is right our thinking, our emotions, our behavior begins to change. One thing uh, that I, 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 I look at the enemy, uh, the colorful figure, the judge of, of Israel, uh, Samson, the first thing the devil did was put his eyes out. Blinded him purposely. Hmm? What happened to, was it uh, Zedekiah, was it Zedekiah, the king, and his Babylon took over and they brought him down into Babylon 
and they judged him. The first thing they did was kill his, two, kill his son right in front of his face, and they put his eyes out. They blinded him. And the enemy is still practicing that today. He's blinding our minds. No longer think the same way. No longer feel the same way. No longer behave the same way. And we fail to understand that he's trying to move us from our steadfastness. He's trying to get us to assimilate and acculturate to this time. Jesus had a prayer, the prayer in John. Father, I pray that you take them, what? Not out of the world, but keep them from the evil of the world. Am I talking loud enough? Don't let the devil blind you. Hmm? Blind you where you no longer understand that there ought to be a compassion a strong desire for the word of God and its capability. Listen, God said it. I'm coming up in my home with uh, my siblings. And mother was there. Mama said it. They had some weight in the home. Hmm? And they look at one another and say, you ain't my mama, you ain't my daddy. No, don't let me deal with that tonight. God said it. Why is it difficult? Because we have what? We have moved away from those particular foundational principles. Our mind is, is cloudy. It's not as, as strong as it used to be. We now compromise. Many times we want God to do for us. We won't be transparent with God. Hmm? There's a reason why we don't think the way we used to think. Don't feel the way we used to feel. Don't act the way we used to act. It's not to God's credit because he's the same. He is immutable. It's not because God's love is no longer directed toward us as individuals in a corporate body. Because he is still omnibenevolent. Regardless of what people say about him and about you. Anytime there is a coldness in us, there's a reluctance to do. There is a time of putting God in a lesser priority. It is us and not God. I made a statement. I'll say it again as we go along tonight. God says, I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. I don't care what you do. Put your seatbelt on. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you go. I don't care how you act. God said, I would not break this contract, this oath, this covenant that I've made with you. If there's any breach, if there's any violation, it's upon our part. Hmm? And how the relationships become cold. We stop doing the things that brought us to this relationship. It starts little. Somebody said the little foxes destroy the vine and we won't be transparent. Lord, what happened to me? How did I get in this place? I look back at my historical relationship with you. How did I get in this place? Why am I feeling the way that I feel? Why do I think the way that I feel? Why do I behave the way that I do? Why do I allow my body to act? Who's talking to me? Who's feeding me? Who's pulling on me? I would like to think that the early church felt the same way but they self-disclosed. They were transparent. The Apostle Paul spoke to the church of 
uh, the community of believers at Ephesus, and he reminded them, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that which is tangible, that which can be seen. We, that's not our battle. And how many times the devil fools us because we have what? Drifted away. He has fooled us and think it's somebody else that's raining on our parade. That's causing us to feel what we feel. And we can feel those, what, anger. We can feel resentment. Am I talking loud enough? And it's not even a person. That's how we have drifted away from our position of steadfastness. Cause and effect. causes to, to rob our peace. The Bible tells us in Isaiah that he's the prince of peace. What causes us to sing songs and we forget that our adoration, we're singing the praises to our God rather than entertaining. It causes us to compromise. And the Lord says, stand up and be a light. You're the light of the world. That world's dark and needs a light. You're a salt of the earth. My God, my God. Transparency. Transparency. More concern. I'm just teaching tonight more concerned about what others think about us than rather than what God thinks about us. Jeremiah would come to the king and say, king, that's all you got to do is just, just, just uh, tell the folks, uh, uh, God said that if you go to Babylon, you'll live. And the king was concerned about what the people thought. Well, they'll say this about me. There's a time when you confront eternity and you're not concerned about anything. You're concerned about making sure that your life is in its right perspective toward God. Am I talking loud enough? Amen. They were weary looking for some help from from God, from God, from God. If God, if God turns his face against us, if God doesn't help us, well then, there in actuality, there is, there's no help. There's no help. If we fracture the relationship that we have with God, He has devised a methodology for us to get it back. I think to some of the people that have reached that 100 mark in life, and they, they oh my, they are so elated about the years that they've accomplished. <laughs> what is 100 plus years to eternity? Are we going to live it somewhere? He gives us the opportunity to examine our lives. He gives us the opportunity to look deep inside of our hearts and our souls and to correct the areas that need correction. Hmm? And he always has what? He always has a solution for every problem. Great peace of they that love thy law. That's central. That's central. Lord, I love you, Lord. Now, if you love God's law, and let's make that love a verb. It's action. It's doing. Hmm? There, there's a song, and, and I'm going forward tonight. There's a song that we used to sing years ago. And oh, my. And it, it has so much uh, meaning in it. That song where it says, 
uh, Sister Sarah, I ain't going to sing it tonight. <laughs> that what? He looks what? Anybody know that song? Sister Floyd, you know that song. He looks what? He looks, uh, he looks beyond all my what? And, and does what? Wouldn't it be a blessing for us? We look at all the faults <laughs> bypass the needs. Hmm? Can't we say praise the Lord? You know something? But we have a tendency of doing that. The other part of that particular verse, when he says, great peace, they that love thy law, is his word. It is a benefit of loving God's law. It is the value and the promise that God would not violate, fracture his promise. Great peace if they did love thy law. And look what he says now. Nothing shall offend thee. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Have you ever considered what you're offended by? What do you consider the word, the vocabulary, the interpretation, the definition of offense or being offended? He says, nothing shall offend thee. When what? When you love God's law. My, 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 my. And sometimes we are hurt by just the words that people use and just by the actions that people display. Am I talking loud enough? Anytime we do not have the peace of God, then something else rules us and guides us. Something happens to us. We knew, we, we, when we get in a place in our life that God's word becomes a lesser priority, a secondary, not a, not a primary. Hmm? And we wonder, why is this when God said that uh, uh, we'll have peace in him when God says that he'll do this when God said he'll come by something happens to us our vision is impaired our hearing is impaired something happens to us and many times that something is called depression and anxiety What's wrong? I, I just can't put my, 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 my finger on it. Hmm? I want to read a couple of things, and I don't want you to raise your hand or anything else. Anytime we come to the place in our walk with God, and we forget the foundation that he has laid for us, we forget the principles that have brought us into the family of God. We become lax, uh, compromising in what we believe. We take little regard in terms of church and fellowship. Communion, Lord's Supper. We take little regard in, in prayer. And as a result of that, it is certainly easy for us to become weak in these particular areas. Even the Bible says to us, if we faint in time of adversity, it means that our strength is small. Now, let me say this to you as we go along. Get a few moments. We become weak in terms of being argumentative. We become weak in terms of allowing the word to stand up inside of us, we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And you always want to be on the side of truth. Hmm? We fail to understand to utilize God's word where he says what? A soft answer. Turn away wrath. Anger resides in it. What? In a fool. It's God's word. God's word. And we're supposed to what? We're supposed to love God's word. Hmm? 
He's what? He's our father. What is it in the 50s, uh, Brother Clark? Elder Floyd, the 50s? <laughs> father what? Knows? That was it. Hmm? Oh, Sister Johnson, I hear you back there. <laughs> he's our father. And if he's our father, can't the father tell us what to do? Father knows best. Can't we say hallelujah? When we no longer stand upon the founding principles of the primitive church, our thinking, our emotions, and our behavior are out of line with him. And we go through the difficulties of life, particularly with depression and anxiety and trepidation. No, certainly could throw a couple more things in there. Is because we're not lined up with him. We understand that the challenges of life are going to come. He's told us that. He that lived godly, what? Will suffer persecution. Is that right? He that is ceased from sin? Hmm? Can we say hallelujah? So these things are going to come. And once we come to the place to be transparent with God and say, God, hear what I'm saying now. Struggling to find joy in worship. I want you to hear me. Something is wrong. Many times I'll quote the scripture, a portion of it, and I'll say what the scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me what? And look what he says. He uses a plurality, not the first person, but the plurality, and says what? Go, go, go. And he's talking about us, the plurality. Hmm? And many times, the very place that we were born becomes a secondary in our heart and our mind. And because we have moved from that foundation that he has placed upon, no longer does that word of God that he's spoken become steadfast, struggling to find joy in worship. And we won't commit, admit that to ourselves, let alone to the transparency with God. Withdrawing from your church or religious community. Or are you getting quiet on me tonight? I'm just, I'm just a conduit. Hmm? I'm just a preacher. I'm just a pastor. Hmm? Somebody, honey, say amen for your husband. Say it loud, baby. Bless your heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> Withdrawn from your church or religious community. My, my, my. The devil wants to isolate you anyway. Hmm? Am I talking about it now? Hmm? Isolation. It works on your cognitive abilities. You find yourself suffering from cognitive distortion. Mm -hmm. And that's how the devil works, first of all, in your mind. Well, just, just right now, just let's, let's say, for instance, everyone here tonight, if God right now could expose your thoughts, What's going through your head right now? Oh, don't raise your hand and say, oh, my. Hmm? Avoid other members of the church. Hmm? Self-disclose. Got a problem with struggling to find joy in worship. Won't be transparent to the Lord, even though the Lord knows. Withdrawn from your church or religious community. Self-disclose to God. Transparency. The truth. Avoid other members of the church. 
losing interest in your regular church activities or performing them only from a sense of duty. I call it mechanical. I, I don't know about you, and I, I, I know uh, that, that, that it's not emotional, but I want to feel God's presence. Him? Hmm? I told you about the old deacon in our church, Deacon Dunn. He didn't say a whole lot, but when he got happy, you'd hear him in church. Oh! Hmm? Every time I come to the assembly of God, I come with expectation. I want to feel God's presence. I want to know that he's with me. Not enough to be stoic. Hmm? mechanical and this is what happens feeling as if Bible study or other religious pursuits have lost its meaning great peace and they that love thy law we center do we center God around us or is God centered Failing to find comfort in prayer. Anytime you pray and sincere about your prayer and connecting with God, when you get up from prayer, you ought to feel amazing. Prayer is talking to God, it's communing with God. It is the, him allowing us as our judge that we can come before the bench and self-disclose and be transparent. Negative or pessimistic thinking about God. Why didn't God hear me? Why didn't God do this? Won't say it loud, but it's in the confines of our heart. Questioning or doubting your faith. Hmm? This is what happens when we do not have that great peace and the love of God's law. We are offended by God himself. Why didn't God do this? Why didn't God hear me? God always hears you. You're just not listening. Questioning or doubting our faith. My, my, my. Last but not least, a sense of spiritual hopelessness or discouragement. I, I, I'm, I'm totally persuaded, totally confident that a person does not have to live beneath their spiritual privilege. I believe that one that has can regain their spiritual strength. I believe that all of us ought to come to a place in our journey in God to be transparent in him. Hmm? Once we are capable of doing that, then we become benefactors of what God says that he's going to do. It's not that he has not done it, he's on the whole because we won't believe it. What do we wrestle with? I'm trying to conclude here. What do we wrestle with? We wrestle, we wrestle with the thoughts of our mind. He puts the devil sometimes, will put us in a different mindset and we miss what the eternal God is trying to give to us specifically. You have to talk to yourself sometime. Hmm? God, your word says I'm victorious when? Right now. We are what? More. I'm just not a conqueror. I'm, I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. Your word declares if God be for us, who can be against us? These must not be 
uh, cold and steel words from a, a collective book of words, but it must be live and vibrant and living in our heart and our soul. I am what God says I am. With my flaws and my indifference, I'm still a child of God. You come to church, act like you walk in the door. I'm expecting God to do something in the carpet body. I'm expecting God to do something for me. I'm just not coming. Many times you've heard your pastor say, uh, don't leave here empty handed. Hmm? My God, my God, you are somebody. Don't allow the devil to take and ruin you and feed you anything. Hmm? No, I may say my old thing again. What is it? It's not what? It's not what's eating you. It's who's feeding you. Stop letting the devil talk trash to you. Am I talking loud enough? Get up, shake yourself. I am a conqueror. Hmm? My God, my God, the Bible told you that you can put the devil on the run. Do it. He's setting up in your house, in your car, in your mind. Hmm? Do it. You got to tell the devil you are a liar. Hmm? And you got to mean it. You got to mean it. Hmm? Transparency. Lord, I don't like the way that I think, that I feel, and my action. Help me to change me for 2023. Don't let me go over to this second and third week with the same outlook, the same disposition. Change me. Work on me. Give me the peace that I so desperately look for. Work inside of me. Manifest inside of me. Am I talking loud enough? For I'll say as the psalmist, great peace have they that love thy law. And what? Nothing shall offend thee. Can you say praise the Lord tonight? Can you say praise the Lord again? My God, my God, my God. What's bothering you? I asked a question a couple of weeks ago. What do you want? I said, what do you want? I even asked myself the question. I said, I don't want nothing but the Lord. What do you want? What is, what, what is it that, that, that causes us to, 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 to act differently? Hmm? What, is, what is it that causes us not just to open a heart and, and just be real? Hmm? Is it God's law? Oh, let me stop it. You all say, that's a long-winded preacher. <laughs> Dr. Morgan, yes. let's uh, try to get us uh, a meeting. Rashamel, I want you to work on that uh, room for us, if you will. And uh, there will be our meeting, and we certainly will start setting the agenda for uh, this year. And uh, you will be notified, those of you that we want to see there. And I'm working early, so I want to see you there. And uh, I want this year to let your pastor be the pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you all that will, I want you to just follow. Now, I'm going to say it like uh, Paul said it in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He simply says, follow me as I follow Christ. Can we say praise the Lord? I think that Bethany has a lot of life before life is over. And that life is incumbent upon you. Hmm? The Bible says we are workers, what? Together. Hmm? And if we bite and devour, one of we shall be what? 
we shall be consumed to one another. Let's get on track. Can we say praise the Lord? Look at your brother and sister and say, I love you. I'm praying for you. And you got to love me too. Put your hand together. Give God some praise. Let us, let us make these bodies do what it's supposed to do. Hmm? And let us start, let us start, let us start this new year off right. Hmm? Let us lay aside everything that is not like God. Hmm? My, 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 my. Let us start being offended. Can we say hallelujah? We are indebted toward God. He is the one that has redeemed us. Someone said he's a God of second chances. Don't fool yourself. Because most of us ran out of those a long time ago. He's a God of another chance. Let us recommit ourselves to him. Let us be concerned about what God is doing and what God desires to do. Don't quit on him. Don't quit on him. We love him, we appreciate him, and let us go forward in believing and having hope in God and the eternal work that he has for us. I'm going to ask tonight that we start making disciples. Hmm? Hmm? And not just stop being God has some wonderful things for Bethany. I'm excited about something already. That he has some wonderful things for us. But we must prepare ourselves for it. God told uh, Israel, we're going to a land of milk and honey, but they had to prepare themselves for it. Let us not faint in the time of adversity. Let us go through. Let us hold up. And let God be God. Too much depression, anxiety, trepidation, worry. Needlessly. I don't know about you, but I got some things I want to cast upon God too. <laughs> let us stand tonight. Two questions right quick. Anyone, two questions. Real quick. Oh, my. Well, let's stand back up then. Nobody got any questions. Well, I suppose that's a good thing then. Mm -hmm. Say it real loud. We got time. Okay, thank you. Is it a, is it a struggle to be transparent with God? out of fear of what he might say? Brother Dennis, it's always a struggle when folks don't want to be honest. And God wants truth. God wants truth. And many times uh, we deceive ourselves. God wants truth out of all of us. You see, in in if a person wants to be truthful and real, they're not worried about the pain and the struggle that they have. If I want life, I want life at any cost. I'm talking about it. It's like the scripture says, blessed is a man that hunger and thirsts after righteousness. Anytime a man, woman, boy, or girl is hungry, they're not worried about what they eat. If you want God, that's the thing. That's to say, get me to him at any cost. What the struggle may be, if you want God and need God, you follow me? Whether you are in church or unchurch, and that's the transparency. God, I need your help now. I don't want to be in the place that I am in. 
I don't want to think the things that I, I don't want to think the thoughts that I think. I don't want to feel the way that I feel. I don't want to behave the way that I behave. But so many times we are so proud and so arrogant that we can't see that. I can see it in you. I can see it in you. I can see it in you. But you can't see it where? In oneself. You follow me? Any time that you want God, check out Psalms chapter 42. Any time you want God, there's no obstacle that's in your path. I hope that touches a little bit. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else? I said two. Yes, sir. Well, if you're going to say a comment, let's make it a comment. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Bishop. You said something last week, I mean uh, Sunday, this Sunday, that was so important. You said uh, Jesus spoke these words to Satan, that he spoke these words to the devil, that man should not live by bread alone and every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And then he was talking, I think, a week before that about how Satan... Uh, he believes, but he can't, he can't change. He can't repent. He, and he trembles. So I'm looking at how you said that with this lesson tonight. That every, when, a man, when a person begins to live by, every, live by the word of God, every word of, uh, out of the mouth of God. Pull your microphone down a little bit. When, when a person begins to uh, live by, by these words, it, it gives that person a chance to, to have life. But it also gives that person a chance to repent and be transparent. As they, as they have, as they have uh, learned to live by the word of God. Yes, sir. You see, Satan and his angels, his cohorts, when they sin, they do not have the benefit of repentance. They are eternally consigned to a future hell. Nothing they can do will change their future. Nothing. With the people of God, God has devised a mechanism, a stratagem to catch us. And that's 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, God is what? Faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us what? from all unrighteousness. But keep in mind, you have to understand where you are now and where God wants you to be. You have so many people, uh, Deacon, and I know you're aware of this, that will talk about the uh, male factor on the cross. But if you notice, he says, this day thou be with me in paradise. So we must be very careful, very cognizant as to what individuals think, what they embrace, what they hold on to, because many times they are not that lifeline that we're looking for. Hope I addressed it in the cubicle, because we don't have a lot of time, but you yes. may bring it back again. Yes, sir, you did, because um, it was, like you said, it helps a person to be, well, me anyway, <laughs> I can't speak for but it helps me, um, I'm going to say this and uh, pass it on, it's just, I'm just thankful for this for this Bible study because everything you were saying early in the Bible in the Bible lesson is what I was on my knees saying to the Lord this morning in tears. I was saying, Lord, you know, show, you know, help me to be. I don't want to be this person if if I'm the reason. But you spoke on Bethany. I said, Lord, if I'm the reason that Bethany is not growing, if I'm the reason, you know, the uh, the Bethany is this and Bethany is or if I'm offending it. Lord, I said, Lord, help me, show me. Lord, I want to be transparent before you. I don't want to be, be that person. I don't want to be, you know, I, I was just on my knees and tears mm -hmm. were just coming out. Because I said, Lord, I need, I need your help. I need you because I don't, I don't want to be that person. Uh, if you got to go, go ahead and go. But let me say this to Deacon and to all of us. Hear what I'm saying tonight. That's all that we have to do. It's just do what you're supposed to do. It's, it's, it's simple. 
God is not going to come down here and tell you, Deacon, I want you to. Well, he has who? He has the prophets. I'm sorry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher. But for, for what? The perfecting of the saint. The work of the ministry. For they to find the body of Christ. Listen, if you cannot follow the preacher, the pastor, you ain't going to follow God. Am I talking loud enough? It's as it's, it's simple as that. Hmm? And, and, and keep in mind, Hebrew says what? He's got to give account. Amen. That might do it with what? Joy and what? what? Not grief. That's the book. If you can't, if you can't listen to the pastor, you ain't going to listen to God. Amen. My pastor said some rough things. But you know what? He was a pastor. And you know what? If he didn't do right, God was going to get him. Right. I had to be what? I had to stay in my place as what? As a disciple. Am I talking like that? It's as simple as that. On your job, you have what? A supervisor, a foreman. And they simply what? They simply tell you what to do. And you do what? You do it, or what? You go home, you lose your job. Hmm? And they, now you, you ought to get what I said. If you don't do your job here, you go home. What home am I talking about? Look out now. I'm not talking about your address. That's what you missed. Don't fool yourself. Can you imagine? The leader, Moses, with all of the things that he's seen, all the things that God allowed him to do, and what Moses did, he was supposed to what? Speak to the rock? That's all he did is hit a rock. And what happened? Said loud, said daughter. He got in trouble. Actually, he lost his life. He met Mount Nebo. And, and what happens, my brother and sister, is, 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 is simply this. That's all God wants us to do. Hmm? Was it Paul said it like this in Romans? He said, reasonable service. <laughs> Can't we say hallelujah? It's not the big things, but the little things that uh, works on us. Hmm? I'm only a conduit. I'm only a, a preacher. Hmm? And I like to see all of us get to heaven and nobody left behind. So one of the things that will keep us from catapulting forward is this right here. And who's feeding you? Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah. Let us say hallelujah again. Uh, hopefully by this meeting that we'll be able to uh, open up Thursday night for a prayer service. That's been in my heart for quite some time. And... Uh, this will be initiated somewhat differently, so that is forthcoming as well. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah? I got something I want you all to pray for with me, that God will uh, touch some people's heart and give us favor. Let us stand, let us stand, let us stand, let us stand. Sister Amana, I'm certainly happy to see you tonight. Amen. Amen. And forgive me, forgive me, your friend with you tonight. Amen. Say that again. Odom, God bless you. Amen. Come on. Put your hands together. Are you a singer? Uh, all right, all right. I won't ask you to sing a solo. <laughs> but I'm certainly delighted that you've uh, come tonight to be with us, sir. And I want to I extend that hand out. I want to see you Sunday, too. Can we say praise the Lord? We're going to ask that our assistant pastor give us the benediction tonight. Gracious God, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your wonderful peace. And oh God, those who are not here tonight, I ask that God touch them and make them feel your goodness in your house, Lord. Rock them and lead them by the bush for the night. And others who may not see fit to follow you, oh God, help us, Lord. Keep us, oh God, in your heart and mind. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 